Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, hockey fans of all ages, this is Hetland Ice Arena, the home rink of the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth Corsairs, and today they welcome the Westfield State Owls in a MASCAC conference matchup. Once again, I am Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here on the south coast of Massachusetts. It should be a good one today. These two teams in the upper half of the MASCAC standings with Westfield State in second at 7-2-2 two two in conference, 9-4-5 and five overall. And the Corsairs coming in fourth in the conference at the current moment, 5-5-1 five, five and 6-10-2 and six, ten and two overall. The starting goaltenders, they are good. Chris Stangarone for the Corsairs, the sophomore goalie, has played in 12 games. He's got a 9-13 save percentage, a 2.69 goals against average, and an overall record of 5-6 for the Westfield State Owls. Terry Messervier, the senior, has played in 16 games this season. And he's got a 9.33 save percentage and a 2.39 goals against average, eight, four, and four overall for the senior out of Montreal, Quebec. Westfield State wearing their visiting navy blue jerseys with royal blue trim around the white numbers and lettering. The Corsairs in their home white jerseys, navy blue shorts and Corsair Gold surrounding the navy blue numbers and lettering. John Graylish in the corner working it around behind the net, but Westfield State takes it back, they dump it in. Stangarone plays it to the corner boards where it's picked up by Eric Bolden on the half wall. Westfield State quickly dumps it back in, took a funky bounce off of the corner boards. And now it is dumped back by Jake Maynard, the defenseman. Gives it to his partner, David Scarbeck. Corsair's having a lot of trouble getting offensive zone entry early in this one. Maynard can't get to it quick enough, so it's taken by number nine, Jake Ratliff. Stangarone puts his glove over it for the faceoff in the first stoppage, 18-49 left in the first period. And it's gonna be top line center Cameron Mack in against John Michael D. Gregorio. Mack gets kicked out, Bolden will take his place. The junior out of Oswego, Illinois. Westfield State winning that face off but unable to get clean possession and UMass able to clear it at least to the line where it's poked out by Mack. Mack gets taken down and UMass is gonna have their first power play. It's going to be ruled interference against assistant captain number two, David Chavis. Six foot four, 215 powder out of Gross Point Woods, Michigan. UMass's first power play of the game comes 18-36 remaining in the first period. It will be Cameron Mackin to take the faceoff, winning the faceoff over to Austin Miller, who can't corral it on the wall, dumped all the way down. Stangrone behind his net, gives off to Sean Leonard, the assistant captain and top left defensive pairing. Austin Miller now clean entry into the Westfield State zone. The Owls able to clear it back out. Leonard able to collect and gives it up to Michael Perrone. Now Stephen Leonard, Austin Miller launches a shot. Messervier got his glove on it but couldn't hold on to it for the stoppage and the Owls able to clear it all the way down the river. 115 left on the power play, 1750 in the first period. Sean Leonard Setting up the Corsair's offense, gives it up to his brother Steven. Now Perone to the middle. No shot, it was blocked down by number 26, Wyatt Lawrence. Back to Leonard, creating space as Jojo Carbone was pressuring shorthanded. Cameron Mack able to use sheer force and size to 
keep that one in the Corsair's offensive zone. Now Sean Leonard in front of the UMass bench. Goes across to Eric Bolden as the second power play unit remains out with 20 seconds to go in the extra man opportunity and it bounces back all the way through the neutral zone into the Corsair zone. Eric Bolden now at the UMass blue line. Cameron Mack dumps it into the corner. Dylan Raiden, top line right wing. He in the corner now behind the net. Cameron Mack as we are back to even strength. D to D to Bolden. Bolden launches a shot looking for the intentional deflection and Mack couldn't get it. Now a shot and a goal! Just above the hash marks was Eric Bolden and no owl on the ice knew where he was. The goal comes with 16.26 remaining. You can see Bolden kind of set up his own opportunity and left wide open in the high slot just above the hash marks. Could call that a set play as Bolden went intentionally wide, initially thinking deflection, and instead took quite the bounce off of the end wall, found Cameron Mack on the left side of Messervier's net. He did not miss the open target. Now a shot blocked away by number five. That's Pat Twombly. John Graylish, Dylan Raiden on the assists on Bolden's goal. Corsairs dump it all the way down the ice. It is icing, the game's first icing call with 15.45 remaining in the first period. Derek Brittner winning the face off against number 14, that's Paul Fries. Westfield State. Now two on three into the Corsair zone. A shot blocked away by David Scarbeck. Good move from Austin Miller diving down in the neutral zone to keep possession. Now Perone having issues with it at the blue line. Austin Miller comes back to recover and the Corsair is still unable to clear out. Now it's Scarbeck. He goes D to D. A lot of loose pucks that no team has had possession of. This is offsides ruled as Austin Miller was a step behind Perone at the blue line. 14.52 to go in the first period. And to take the face off is John Graylish out of Bakersfield, California. The freshman listed as a right wing. Corsairs take over possession. Now is number 21, Melker Kroon. Kroon, the sophomore six-footer out of Malmo, Sweden. Sending it in and into Maservier's glove. He holds on for the faceoff with 14.34 remaining. The Corsairs up 1-0 over Westfield State. The lone goal coming from Eric Bolden. Assisted by Graylish. And Dylan Raiden. Sean Leonard into the slot. Now Clay Ellerbrock behind the net. Making his way into the corner now along the half wall. We go D to D, Sean Leonard one-timer. That's blocked away down by number nine, Jake Ratliff. The Owls swarming around the neutral zone, but now it's a three on two. Now four on two up into the offensive zone for the Corsairs. Cameron Mack in the corner, backhands it around, and it's taken by Robert Newworth. Opportunity, no shot from number 11. That would be Daniel Backstrom out of Helsinki, Finland. This one deflected and almost off a of Maynard skate. 
and right past Stangarone, but it went maybe three inches wide. The Owls with their best offensive opportunity of the game as somebody lost a glove. That was Jake Maynard in the Corsair zone as it goes all the way down the rink and into the Owls side of the ice. Now three on two into the Corsair zone is John Michael DiGregorio. His shot goes wide and now it's a possible two on one. Dylan Raiden working with Bolden. Bolden in front and he couldn't get a stick on it just maybe a foot ahead of him was the pass from Raiden. The Corsairs recover. Bolden behind the net looking for somewhere to go. He's double teamed by the Owls. Out to the blue line looking for Scarbeck. Instead it ping pongs to Jake Maynard. The Corsairs have to tag up. The delayed offsides waved off as they do just that. Physical one shaping up here is Jimmy Pelton got run into at the blue line. This one up into the protective netting. A stoppage with 12.32 to go in the first period. 1-0 Corsairs. Only two shots officially for the Corsairs. One of them made its way to the back of the net. Three shots for the Owls. And three saves for Chris Stangarone. Owls into the UMass zone. A shot in, a save by Stangarone. It's in his glove after it went right into his chest. Good opportunity coming from Jake Ratcliffe out of Canterbury, New Zealand. Nice slot, it just bounced right onto his tape. Nothing fancy about the shot, just a quick wrister. And it found Stangarone's chest and eventually his glove. He held on for the faceoff there. Now across the 12 minute mark, 11.50 to go as this one bounces up into the protective netting. These two teams just about even on faceoffs. Four wins in the dot for the Owls, three for the Corsairs. Back in to take the face off, able to win it back to Sean Leonard. Leonard goes across to Tanner Opie. This one deflects again up into the protective netting. Opie listed as the extra skater, the freshman six foot, 200 pounder out of New Brantford, Connecticut. He's played in two games. In this, his rookie season, yet to tally a point. Austin Miller. Now behind the net is Mack. Back to Scarbeck, his shot. Blocked down by Maservier. The Corsairs recover in the corner. Steven Leonard, and he is tripped up, and the Corsairs will go on another power play. Their second opportunity of the game, cross check is the call. And headed to the box is number 25. Dan Long, the third pairing defenseman, freshman out of Wilford, Connecticut. 0 for 1 on the power play so far with just one scoring opportunity. On the power play, the goal came a mere 15 seconds after the last power play opportunity ended, and the Westfield State Owls were scrambling to recover. Now it's a shorthanded two-on-one getting tripped up. The arm stayed down, so it will not be a four-on-four. Now two Corsairs collide as Westfield State is doing an excellent job so far in the first 30 seconds of this power play to Waste out the clock, a lot of long passes back and forth through the neutral zone. Maynard goes to Dylan Raiden for forwards on the ice for the Corsairs. Graylish now to Mack. Blue line is Maynard to Raiden. 
Now to Bolden. Back to Maynard. He goes to the opposite faceoff dot for Cameron Mack. Mack spinning with it at the blue line. Gets the pass back now with some space to work. Launches one blocked away. And the Owls able to clear into the neutral zone. UMass will have to tag up. They will change out their forwards in the same token. Now Eric Bolden in. Ten minutes to go even in the first period. 45 seconds on the power play opportunity. And Bolden's shot ramps up and out of play. Owls able to take it in the corner is John Bulos. Now it's assistant captain Sean Leonard into the offensive zone. 20 seconds to go on the power play. And he turns the puck over to the Owls who quickly send it all the way down the river. Stangarone will leave it for Sean Leonard. Now 10 seconds to go on the extra man opportunity. Steven Leonard recovering at the blue line, back to even strength. And again, the move for the Owls is to have Dan Long skate directly across the ice to the Westfield State bench, back to even strength, but the Corsair is still buzzing. A shot and a pad save by Messervier, a rocket from Michael Perrone. Now Perrone recovering along the half wall. Leonard heads to the bench for a change. The Corsair is still comfortably in the offensive zone. This one deflects up and out of play off the stick of Perrone, who had his twig knocked out of his hands. Is that? You take a look at the replay here. Behind the net again, it was almost the same exact move for Eric Bolden. Eight forty-seven left to go in the first period as we are back to even strength. Scarbick with a pass and we're gonna have another power play for the Corsairs. Tripping is gonna be the call. Let's see where that trip happened. Are they gonna call tripping? It's gonna go against number 21 of the Corsairs. That's Melker Kroon. There was some knee-on-knee -knee contact there that we didn't see, so it's interesting that tripping is the call as both of those players were trying to chase down the puck. So Westfield State's first power play opportunity of the game comes with eight and a half minutes to go in the first period, trailing by a goal. 1-0 is the Corsairs lead. Jake Ratcliffe on the half wall, sends it up to the top of the key, gets it back on the give and go. The shot ramps up and out of play. Josh Bulos running point for the Owls. John Michael D. Gregorio in to take the face off against Cameron Mack. Mack wins it back to Sean Leonard. It inadvertently hits the ref and is sitting in the face off dot. The Owl is able to recover. A shot is blocked away. Nobody knows where it is. And an odd stoppage is was up the sleeve of Cameron Mack. Stoppage 121 to go in the Owls power play. 8.02 to go in the first period. Steven Leonard gets kicked out of the face-off dot. He will be replaced by Austin Miller. The Owls winning it. Bulos, thinking shot, has it poked by Austin Miller right out into the neutral zone. Now Miller trying to create a shorthanded opportunity with a minute to go in the extra man opportunity for the Owls. The Servier forced to make a save, and it's going to be an offensive zone faceoff. That gets a rise out of the Corsair bench with 59 seconds to go in the power play opportunity.
Shot goes wide. Grabbing the loose puck of the Owls. A shot off of the legs of Scarbeck. Austin Miller able to take it all the way into the Owls defensive zone. Now half a minute to go on the power play opportunity. 7-10 left in the period. Deflected at the blue line, so it will not be icing. It was off of the stick of Danny Ferry. Steven Leonard chips it to the blue line, but not out. Good recovery at the line for the Owls. Now in the slot, unable to launch a shot. Steven Leonard again dumps it all the way down. Back to even strength. UMass quickly changing out. All five skaters, well, four of them, as there were only four skaters on the ice for about 15 seconds there. We're going to have another penalty call. This one's going to be slashing against Cameron Mack. It's Mack headed to the box. He wants to know what he did, but when a stick hits the ice, they're going to call slashing 10 out of 10 times. 0 for 1 of the power play that had just ended. For the Owls, their second opportunity of the game. Mere four shots on net to this point for Westfield State 7 for the Corsairs. Newworth winning the faceoff. Bulo's working the point with FX Gerard. Shot, glove saved by Stang Roan, and he holds on for the faceoff. FX Gerard, the captain of this Owls team, 6'2, 200 pounds out of St. Lazare, Quebec. We see the typical four forwards, one defenseman on the power play unit. This is Gerard. Across to Bulos. Bulos' shot goes well wide. Might have been looking for the tip by Di Gregorio in front. It's collected by Robert Newworth. Now launching a shot is Gerard. Stangerone finds it off of the end boards and covers up for the face off. 113 to go in the power play. 538 to go in the first period. If you take a look at that shot from the top of the key from NFX Gerard, he really launched it and got a lot of speed behind it. Might have left a dent in the end boards. Corsairs send it all the way down. Able to take it is Dylan Raiden. He quickly spins it all the way back down to Terry Messervier. Raiden backhanded shot goes well wide. The Corsairs will change out their defensive pairing. Now 40 seconds on the extra man opportunity for the Owls. Five minutes to go in the first period. An all important Mascac conference matchup here between the Westfield State Owls and the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. A shot and another save for Chris Stangeron. That one between his blocker hand and his rig cage. That gets a cheer out of the penalty box from Cameron Mack. Winning the faceoff is Steven Leonard. Around to Austin Miller into the neutral zone. And he gets taken down and the arms of the referees stay down. 10 seconds on the power play opportunity. Bulos' shot goes high off of the glass. Three seconds left on the power play. Max standing in the box ready to come back out. And we are at even strength 0 for 2 on the power play for the Westfield State Owls. Max stays out on the ice. Icing is the call against Westfield. Comes 200 feet down the sheet of ice. 
And a face off in the Corsairs offensive zone, 4.15 to go in the first period. The Corsairs leading it one to nothing. Eric Bolden with the lone goal. The assist going to Dylan Raiden and John Graylish. Graylish in to take the face off and winning it, but no Corsair was in the immediate area. And it ping pongs all the way back to Jake Maynard. Maynard tried to force it up to Melker Kroon at the blue line. Kroon able to get possession at least momentarily before Westfield State dumps it all the way down. Chasing now is Ryan Mescali. A shot stick saved by Stangarone. Might have had a rebound opportunity, but unable to get a stick on it was number 26, Wyatt Lawrence. Maynard behind the net. Off the glass as he tried the indirect self pass. It had a little bit too much mustard on it. David Chavis launched a shot from the blue line, and now the Corsairs send it all the way down the rink. Icing is the call. 3.29 to go in the first period. Graylish to take the face off against Di Gregorio. Di Gregorio winning it, immediately launching a shot, saved by Stangarone off his right pillow. Westfield State seemingly figuring out their offensive zone attack in recent moments. Di Gregorio with it, working with FX Gerard. Maynard spinning it, Gerard trying to keep it in. It's punched in at the blue line by David Chavis. And eventually finds its way to the plus side of the blue line. 2.55 to go. The Corsairs recovering as Westfield State had to tag up and clear the zone. They will have to do so again as the errant pass finds its way to the neutral zone for Robert Newworth. Maynard collecting behind the net. Back to Stephen Leonard. He goes D to D to Mescali. Austin Miller. Play Ellerbrock launched a shot behind the net and another goal! Steven Leonard walking in just below the hash marks this time and UMass takes a two goal lead with 2.22 to go in the first period. Deuces Wild on the scoreboard right now for UMass Dartmouth. Let's take another look. Austin Miller finding Steven Leonard. He goes top shelf right above the left shoulder of Messervier. He only had about four square inches to work with in that top right corner of the net. And the Corsair captain made no mistake. 2-0 UMass with 2.22 to go. The Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference matchup here at Hetland Ice Arena on the south coast of Massachusetts. Dylan Raiden in to take the face off against Di Gregorio. And that was Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe able to get possession for the Owls. Ella Brock's going to get the primary assist on that. Austin Miller with the secondary assist on Leonard's goal. Reservier covers up for the faceoff with 1.55 to go. And ask for a better start for the Corsairs. They've got nine shots on net. They've scored on two of them while preventing Westfield State from launching more than eight shots and eight saves for Chris Stangeron. Patrick Wren making his way from extra skater early on in the season to top pairing right defenseman. Six foot senior out of Charleston, Mass. Neutral zone face off, it's not really won by the Corsairs, but 
Sean Leonard able to poke it away and trying to get possession on the half wall towards the corner to the right of Chris Stangerone. Collected by Josh Bulos out of Burlington, Mass. Sending it into the Corsair zone. Now 1.15 to go in the first period. He shot a weak one. And it went off a couple of bodies and wide. Now a block for Sean Leonard. Bulos turns and rims it around the dasher. Stegarone tried to play behind his net, but it was still riding the rails back there and found its way all the way around to the far half wall now. Sean Leonard backhanding it out. Here's Jimmy Pelton in a two on one out in front for Bolden, a shot in, a nice save by Maservier. Eric Bolden looking for his second. And if it wasn't for the glove of Terry Maservier, he would have had it. Intentional offsides is the call against the Owls. Let's take a look back at that two on one for the Corsairs. Pelton finding the backhand of Eric Bolden. And Maservier made the stop. 27.8 seconds to go. In the first period, it is 2-0 UMass. Cameron Mack getting kicked out of the faceoff dot again. Second time he's been asked to vacate the dot in this game. Bolden collects, spinning with it as he is knocked down to the ice. Dylan Raiden leaves it behind and chips back out into the neutral zone. It's a two-on-two -two into the Owls offensive zone. This one ramping up and out of play. Mere 7.2 seconds to go as both teams change out. Steven Leonard in to take the face off against Di Gregorio who won it. The shot deflected just wide off the tape of Di Gregorio. The buzzer sounds. And we have reached the end of the first period. Can't ask for a better start to this hockey game for the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs who lead it two to nothing over their Mascac division rival, the Westfield State Owls. Steven Leonard and Eric Bolden with the two Corsair goals. And that is where we leave it at the end of the first 20. 2-0 UMass over Westfield State at the end of the first period. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you second period action right after this. Welcome back into Hetland Ice Arena in New Bedford, Massachusetts for second period action between the Westfield State Owls and the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. Once again, I am Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high above the ice here on the south coast of Massachusetts. The score, a good one for the Corsairs. Two to nothing, the two goals coming from Stephen Leonard and Eric Bolden, both in the first period and both even strength. The Westfield State Owls are 0 for 3 on the power play. And Terry Maservier has made some excellent saves in net for the team in blue. Chris Tangeron has matched his adversary on the other side of the ice. 10 shots through the first period for UMass, 8 for the Owls. 8 saves apiece for each of these goaltenders, 0 for 2 on the power play for both of these squads. And face-offs are about even 16 of 30 in favor of the Owls, 14 wins for the Corsairs. The Westfield State Owls wearing their visiting navy blue jerseys, light blue trim around the white numbers and lettering. The Corsairs where they're wearing their home white jerseys, navy blue shorts, Corsair gold around the navy blue numbers and lettering. Dylan Raiden on the half wall on the far side. Turns the puck over, but 
It trickles all the way through the into the neutral zone, picked up by Dan Long. Now Sean Leonard, as the Owls have possession in the Corsair zone, scrapping for it and eventually able to get it out into the neutral zone is number 20, Clay Ellerbrock, who assisted on Leonard's goal. It finds its way into the bench area for a neutral zone faceoff. It's going to be Daniel Backstrom, the senior out of Helsinki, Finland, against Cameron Mack, the senior from Long Beach, California. This one sent hard off the half wall and kept in at the blue line just barely. Might have been an, about an inch away from finding the white of the neutral zone. But Bulos kept it on the blue line. Now it's sent all the way out through the neutral zone. Long picking it up. As Eric Boulder went down to the ice and now checking his right skate. Stangrone with the glove save. And he holds for the faceoff with 18-13 to go in the second period. As previously mentioned, this is a Massachusetts State Collegiate Athletic Conference matchup. An important one at that. The Owls in second place in the MASCAC as they have possession now picked up by Bolden. He turned it over to the Owls. Collected by David Chavis. Twombly able to get it to Michael Perrone. Three on two up ice for Perrone. His shot, or pass rather, across the slot for Steven Leonard, who couldn't get a shot off. Now the Owls able to collect. Westfield State second in the conference, seven, two, and two. In the MASCAC, nine, four, and five overall. The Corsairs, five, five, and one. In the MASCAC, six, ten, and two overall. This one blocked away. Perrone has it. Looking for Austin Miller, and that's going to be ruled off sides. The Corsairs will end up tagging up, or that would have been an icing, I think, was the call, the signal from the linesman. This one chipped in, barely on sides again for the Owls. Now it's going to be a trip against Jimmy Pelton, as going down to the ice was Andrew McCormick, the freshman from Canton, New York. Pretty decisive trip there, and right on the left side of your screen, there it is. Pelton got his stick in front of McCormick's legs. McCormick made the call easy for the officials by going down a little bit easy. There's Bulos, 0 for 2 on the power play so far for the Owls, just three shots on those two opportunities. Bulo is running the point. Working with Jake Ratcliffe. A shot and a goal! Came from FX Gerard from just off center in the high slot from the blue line, and it just got all the way through. Stangaro might have been expecting the deflection. Let's take another look at that. Gerard launching it from the left side of your screen. Good screen in front. And it just got past Stangarone. So, two to one with 16-42. FX Gerard on the goal. Pretty impressive jump in front from Di Gregorio, who was right up in Stangarone's grill. Power play goal, one for three on the day. Now for the Westfield State Owls. Just their 12th shot of the day, 10 for the Corsairs as they look to get their offense going in the second period. This one sticked up and out of play from Terry Besservier. Six foot three, 196 
pound senior from Montreal, Quebec. One of the hockey capitals of the world. Up there in Eastern Canada. Of course, Toronto would be the other. Of course, there's three on two into the zone, and Perone! Oh, it hit the post. I thought it went in. It might have hit that middle post and bounced right out, but Perone started to celebrate. An empty net for Michael Perone, and it went off the pipe. Offsides now called against Steven Leonard. Let's take another look at that last offensive opportunity for the Corsairs. Leonard dishing it to Perone in front. And right off that right corner of the post. Meanwhile, Austin Miller's headed to the box. Now we've got a lengthy stop. Austin Miller in the box. Although it seemingly looks like they're just giving him a misconduct, so it's not going to be a manpower change. Indeed, he's going to stay five on five, so no power play for Westfield. But Austin Miller with the misconduct in the box for the next ten. Three on two up ice for the Owls. A shot saved by staying Rome. Might have been going wide anyway. Austin Miller... One of the more impactful members of this Corsair offense, the second line right winger, the freshman out of Meridian, Idaho, six foot, 195 pounds. He's played in 18 games, six goals, 10 assists. Good for 16 points. Now sent out to the blue line. Mascali launches a shot. This one tipped up and into the protective netting. A small protest from the Corsairs who thought that did not hit the netting and should have remained a live puck, 15-14 to go. In the second period, it's two to one, UMass over the Westfield State Owls. Steven Leonard to take the face off against Paul Fries. Fries, five foot 10 out of Portland, Oregon. Shot from Leonard, saved by Maservier. A lot of players from abroad on this Westfield State roster. A lot of players from Quebec, the Czech Republic, and Finland. So the most interesting would be Canterbury, New Zealand, and of course Jake Ratcliffe. Opportunity for Perone, and it slid through the slot again. Perone has been buzzing the second period. He hit the post earlier on in this second frame. This one sent wide, looking for the deflection in front for Paul Fries. Sent all the way back down. Icing is the call against UMass with 14-20. Let's take a look at sec Perone's second scoring opportunity of the period. Leonard out in front again, setting it up. And this one might have gone off um, Servier's pillow as it deflected out back to the faceoff dot. 14.20 to go. Clay Ellerbrock kicked out of the dot. Leonard comes in. And an immediate whistle. And it's going to be a power play upcoming. for UMass. As interference the call goes against number 22, Robert Neuwirth. 
Right there, there was some contact in taking down Stephen Leonard, who was Newworth. So UMass 0 for 2 on the power play so far. Winning the face off, here's Jake Maynard at the point. Down to Cameron Mack. Mack back to Maynard. Maynard D to de facto D for Eric Bolden. Four forwards on the ice. Now John Graylish goes to Cameron Mack. Mack along the half wall. Sends it around the boards where it is quickly taken by the Owls and dumped all the way down the river. Stangerone backhanding it for Maynard. Now Raiden picks it up back to Maynard, but it's taken by number 13 for the Owls, Justin Alves, who's almost single-handedly wasted out the first 45 seconds of this power play for UMass. This one chipped up and out of play off of the stick of David Chavis into the UMass bench. 1-10 to go on the penalty to top line left winger Robert Newworth out of Zlin, Czech Republic. Of course, the Czech Republic, the home of David Krejci among many other NHL players. Hockey scene is on fire over there. Perone turns the puck over and the Owls able to chip it out into the neutral zone. Sean Leonard collects, 40 seconds to go on the power play, 12.56 now in the period. Icing against the Corsairs is the call. That's an interesting one because that puck, from when it was shot in, looked like it was well on the right side of the red line. Either way, the faceoff will come all the way down to Chris Stangerone's left side. 35 seconds in the extra man opportunity. Corsair's winning it. Sean Leonard now, the lone defenseman on the ice. Lost an edge. Now Maservier behind the net, leaving it open, at least for the moment. Leonard out to Perone. Perone couldn't handle the pass cleanly. And now a two-on-one shorthanded for the Owls. Good diving poke check by Sean Leonard to negate that shorthanded opportunity. Now a shot. Maservier with the save. It kind of handcuffed him up on the upper end of his chest. Back to even strength. Newworth right out of the box and has possession of the puck. He goes one-on-three up ice. Going behind the net for Stangerona, backhanded shot left behind, collected by John Graylish. I was launching another shot, now 12 minutes to go in the second period. But the Westfield State Owls buzzing. Looking for the equalizing goal, this one deflects wide. Elker Kroon trying to chase it down. Now it's Sean Leonard, Kroon to the bench for a change. Leonard shot, glove saved by Maservier. He holds for the faceoff. 11.39 to go in the second. Mackin to take the faceoff. This one deflecting high is. Linesman thought about ruling a hand pass. Ultimately did not go that route. Newworth backhanding it into the neutral zone. Twombly to Mack. Linesman had to duck as that dump in was a headhunter for him. Shot and a couple of saves by Stangerone in a good sequence for the Westfield State Owls. Stangerone finally able to get his glove on it and cover it up. Let's take a look at the last Westfield State opportunity. There's the initial save off the right pad. Rebound attempt off his left pad and finally able to cover up the rebounds. 
Offensive zone faceoff for the Owls. The Corsairs winning said faceoff. Good interior passing and in going down hard was number 24, Derek Brittner. It's kind of lifted by number 25, Dan Long. Brittner in to take the face off. The third line has not seen tons of action today. That includes Kai Kaposi, one of the assistant captains, who's got eight points on the year, six goals. Jimmy Pelton out to the blue line, a one-timer and a rebound attempt for Pelton, who was trying to camp out right in front. Whistle a stoppage as it went up into the protective netting. Austin Miller still in the box for the 10-minute misconduct. Gotta wonder what was said that angered the officials so much. Out in front, Elker Kroon couldn't get his stick on it. Now behind the net, a shot. Oh, what a save by Messervier! Diving down to the ice and getting his glove on it. High slot. Can't fault the Corsairs there. A phenomenal save by Terry Messervier. Graylish to take the face off. Shot in it, bounces in, it went over Messervier. Westfield didn't know where it is and the Corsairs regain a two goal lead. It's gonna go to Melker Kroon. Just chipped it up. You can see it in the air there, and the only one who knew where it was was Jake Radcliffe, who had a stick on the wrong side of the net to try to bat it away. And right after making that phenomenal save, when Pelton thought he had an empty net, the Corsair, Corsair is able to get kind of a fluky one there. 10 minutes to go in the second period. It is now three to one. The Corsairs on top and we've got a scrap now and a pile up in the corner. Immediate whistles. This will surely lead to at least a four on four. Cameron Mack was in on the action and still some players finding some dance partners. Let's take a look at what led to that in the corner. Right there, it's Cameron Mack, who was kind of getting bear hugged and then thrown down to the ice by one of the owls. And there's the pile up that started everybody immediately in to defend their guy. David Chavis was the offending owl. They are still trying to sorted out on the ice. There are two Corsairs joining Austin Miller in the box. And now two Owls in the box as well. Among them is David Chavis. And it looks like number... Nineteen. Sean Leonard and Cameron Mack in the box for the Corsairs, along with Austin Miller, who's got a few more minutes left on his 10-minute misconduct penalty. Refs trying to sort out the manpower issues here. Theoretically, that would lead to a three-on-three, -three, and there's some serious chirping in the box. Sean Leonard yelling at David Chavis for his actions there.
So theoretically, if this is a manpower change, it would be a three on three for the next two minutes. It's gonna be a neutral zone face off. Be interested to see if these are, they could rule straight misconducts for everybody. Which would mean no manpower changes. No penalties have been posted on the board as of yet. However, there are only three skaters on the ice. Now well, there's four for each side. Is now the explanations to the coaches and the benches. Westfield State calling for the faceoff to be in the offensive zone. They're not going to win that battle. Looks like it's gonna remain five on five. So 10 minute misconducts all around for Sean Leonard, Cameron Mack. Those are probably the two biggest losses. David Chavis for the Owls. And we're back underway. Terry Maservier making the stop. It might be number 13, Justin Alves in the box with Chavis for the Owls. No manpower change. As we await the official announcement of what the heck is going on out of that one. Well, first we've got the goal announcement for Melker Kroon. That was the third UMass goal. Bulo is a shot. This one off of Stangerone's arm to the end boards. Out in front, you now diving down to the ice. Bodies flying everywhere. And we're going to get an immediate call. And it's going to go against Westfield State. And another pile up ensues. And there's an injured Corsair in the slot. He was headhunted. And still chirping in the box are David Chavis and Sean Leonard. I'm gonna have to watch the two of them as they get out of the box. Sean Leonard not happy with David Chavis. Let's take a look at that high hit. Right in the slot is where you're looking. Right there. It's Twombly that's down and he was he caught the shoulder of Robert Newworth, who one would assume is going to find his way to the locker room. All right, with Pat Twombly still on the ice, we're going to take a quick breather. 9.21 to go in the second period. It is 3-1 UMass, and the second period has gotten awfully ugly and chippy. We'll be back in a flash. All right, well, Robert Newworth has been showed the way to the locker room, and everybody in the UMass side of the crowd and the bench waving him goodbye after he headhunted Pat Twombly, the sophomore out of Hull, Mass, who was helped off of the ice. A five-minute major penalty for Newworth, and 
everybody's kind of playing. How many people can you stuff into a telephone booth in the penalty box? Sean Leonard, Austin Miller, Jimmy Pelton, and Cameron Mack in the box for the Corsairs. Pelton earned a two-minute penalty for his response to the high hit for Newworth. The Owls are going to have to send somebody over to the box to serve out Newworth's five-minute penalty. And whoever that will be will join David Chavis and Justin Elves, who are both serving 10-minute misconducts. The UMass Athletic Department, it looks like, speaking to the Corsairs in the box, telling him cooler heads need to prevail here. Leonard's been barking at Chavis for just about the entire time that those two have been in the box serving matching misconducts. It's going to be four on four for the next two minutes. However, if the Owls score in that two minutes, it will become a five on four in favor of the Corsairs for the remainder of however many of the five minutes are left. Newark has been kicked out of this game for head hunting the six foot senior out of Zlin, Czech Republic. Throw a shoulder into Pat Twombly, who is receiving medical attention on the UMass bench. Corsairs on the ice. Scarbeck, Dylan Raiden, Stephen Leonard, the captain, and number 24, Derek Brittner. So kind of a mishmash of all lines. Two centers on the ice for the Corsairs. And Dylan Raiden gets dragged down. The arms stay down. Now the Owls. Through the neutral zone is number 11, Daniel Backstrom. Backstrom going hard to the corner with Scarbeck. Here's Brittner now. Derek Brittner throws a shot on Messervier. He makes the pad stop. The deflection now to the half wall. Perone onto the ice for the Corsairs. Steven Leonard, the other forward. Eric Bolden as well. Scarbeck shot. A glove save by Messervier. He flashed the leather. It holds on for the faceoff. 8.20 to go in the second period. 59 seconds on Pelton's penalty, 3.59 in Newworth's five minute major. Bolden's going to be in to take the faceoff. Perone on the ice as well. Jake Maynard and Patrick Wren on the ice for the Corsairs. Andrew McCormick forcing it up into the offensive zone. Danny Fieri on the half wall. The other interesting thing is when the four on four expires, it'll be pretty close to Austin Miller serving out his 10 minute misconduct. Bolden goes around the boards looking for Perone, doesn't connect. It's taken by Tristan Theriot. Corsairs take it, and it's Jake Maynard. Going to Patrick Wren now. Graylish launches a shot. That was blocked away by Andrew McCormick. Messervier covers with his blocker for the faceoff. A little bit more as mass vacancies from the penalty box. Leonard and Mack are out. Austin Miller remains. And David Chavis and Justin Alves both vacated the Westfield bench, so maybe those were only five-minute misconducts compared to Austin Miller's 10-minute. There's six seconds left on the four-on-four. 7.26 in the period, 3.06 left in Newark's major. Now the refs have to sort out who came out of the box and why. Lane 
lengthy conversation here at the scorer's desk. There's a three to one UMass lead here. Six seconds left again on Jimmy Pelton's penalty for interference. Austin Miller's been cooped up in the penalty box for the majority of the last 10 minutes. He's looking to get back out, get his legs moving. Now heading back to the box is Justin Alves. But he got a misconduct at the same time as David Chavis. So, color me confused. The Owls offsides. And Leonard bumping into number 14, Paul Fries. Leonard got very hot-headed in the box with David Chavis. They were barking back and forth for the duration of their misconduct. It's a five on four now for three minutes even for the Corsairs on Newworth's major penalty for a hit to the head. Newworth has been kicked out of this game and has made his way to the Westfield State locker room. John Graylish to the end wall. Raiden goes down. Cameron Mack now fresh out of the box. He's looking for an opportunity and his shot finds the chest of Terry Messervier. 2.35 to go in the major penalty. UMass looking to add to their lead. Graylish comes and collects the faceoff back to Jake Maynard. His shot from the high slot finds Eric Bolden. Now Graylish and Mack, Westfield State able to clear it. Finally out of the neutral zone, into the neutral zone, John Michael DiGregorio with the opportunity for Westfield State. Now Bolden goes skate to stick. Trying to force it and on the half wall. Now backhands all the way across to Jake Maynard with space to Cameron Mack now. Mack can't handle it cleanly. Has to double back. He goes indirect for Graylish. Back to Mack. Maynard. Raiden can't handle it in the slot. He was wide open looking for the one-timer. Westfield State clears all the way down the river. 1.43 to go in the major penalty to Newworth. Six minutes even left in the period. Melker Kroon. Can't gain clean entry. A minute and a half left and Stangerone couldn't handle it cleanly on the boards, so he had to carry it right out into his crease. John Leonard spinning with it. Finding a little bit of space now, five and a half to go in the second period, a two goal lead for the Corsairs. Looking to add to it was Leonard driving down the slot. Now Michael Perrone gives off to Leonard who was knocked into by number 21. That's Jojo Carbone. 54 seconds left in the major penalty. Leonard's going to have to chase this one down all the way 200 feet down the rink. Perrone gains clean entry out through the slot for Kroon. Kroon launches a shot. That goes wide. Might have gone off a skate in front. Now Michael Perrone. Steven Leonard behind the net. He gets held on to. Leonard creating space now behind the net to Perrone. His shot sticked away by Messervier. Melker Kroon recovering now. 15 seconds left in the major penalty. Leonard launches a shot from the top of the slot. And Messervier gets his glove on it and holds on for the faceoff. 13 seconds left in New Earth's major penalty. Four and a half to go in the second period. 24 shots to this point for the Corsairs. 14 for Westfield State. Only four power play opportunities for these two squads to this point because a lot of the shenanigans were matching misconducts and no manpower changes were associated with that. Back to even strength. 419 in the period. 0 for 5 on the power play are the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. Mm -hmm. 
Having to tag up and retreat to the blue line where the course is. Now it's collected by Twombly. Good to see him back out on the ice. He was the subject of Robert Newworth's headhunting penalty. Twombly off the boards. Looking for Ellerbrock. That didn't connect and sent all the way down, deflected off a course here in the neutral zone. No icing. Scarbeck backhands for Stephen Leonard. The Corsair captain had it taken off of his tape. Now Twombly up ahead, backhands it in on Maservier. He dumps it back behind the net for Andrew McCormick. All the way back, Sean Leonard will collect now at the hash marks. 3.15 to go in the second period. Deflection the ruling, so no icing. This one sent all the way down and will not be an icing as it was headed for Stangarone. Sean Leonard collects and is spinning with it now. Three minutes even to go in the second period. UMass holding on to a 3-1 lead. There's been ugliness to put it lightly in the second period. He finds Austin Miller's tape. Or rather that's number 16 for the course. Here's Patrick Wren who let his twig go and instead of going to collect it, was barking at the ref for a slashing call. Now a two on one for the Corsairs. Sean Leonard for Perone. Perone had it off the blocker of Terry Maservier and able to recover it is Michael Perone. Maservier has made some phenomenal saves in this game. Austin Miller backhanding it, looking for Perone. Instead to the blue line for David Scarbeck. Scarbeck backhanding it in, gets through the initial layer of Owls. And now out into the neutral zone where it was backhanded by Perone to Austin Miller. Both squads change out. Two minutes to go in a interesting second period. Cameron Mack takes it, a shot, and Maservier another save. This one off his shoulder and deflected to the half wall. Eric Bolden, now Scarbeck unable to punch it in. Dylan Raiden goes to Jake Maynard off sides against Cameron Mack in a stoppage with 1.45 to go. Let's take a look at the steal that led to the Cameron Mack opportunity. Servier out of his crease to cut down the angle. And Mack left looking towards the ceiling here at Hetland Ice Arena. Twenty-seven shots on net for the Corsairs. Fourteen for the Owls. Stangerone saved thirteen of those. The Servier has saved twenty-four of the shots launched by the Corsairs. One and a half minutes to go in the second period. Stangerone with a pad save. Bolden. In the corner. Sent out in front. Now Dylan Raiden chases to the far corner. Trying to collect with 115 to go out in front. A shot. And Stangerone with a save. And he quickly dives on it. As another shoving match ensues right in front of the UMass crease. 114 to go in the second period. You gotta wonder what can the officials do for the next minute and 14 seconds to get to this break without more shoving matches and some scrums breaking out. You'd imagine both coaches are going to have some interesting words for their teams, both Bob Meal of the Westfield State Owls. And Eric Nowak of the Corsairs. Opportunity here for the Corsairs. Brittner couldn't get to it. Pelton tried to leave it for him in the slot. Brittner able to collect. Turnaround shot, no, does not find its way to Maservier. One minute to go in the second period. Offsides is the call against Westfield. Fifty-one point three on the clock. There's Pat Twombly. And could see him back out on the ice after taking that dangerous shoulder hit to the head from Robert Newworth.
shot right into the gut of Stangeron. He holds on for the faceoff with 42.9. Three one is the UMass lead under a minute to go now in the second period. I think everyone's just looking to get out of this frame unscathed. Icing is the call against the Corsairs. Exactly seven seconds bled off the clock. And the puck will come all the way back down to Chris Stangerone's left. Westfield State winning that faceoff. Twombly trying to collect on the end boards. Now it's number 11, Daniel Backstrom. Fifteen seconds to go. The Owls take possession of it through the neutral zone. Is Backstrom. Now it's FX Gerard, the owner of the lone Westfield State goal. Stangerone covered it with about half a second on the clock. They let it bleed down to zero. And we have reached the end of the second period. A chippy one, to put it lightly. 3-1 is the score of the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs leading the Mascac division rival Westfield State Owls. It's been an interesting one. Matching misconducts, there were five of them called in that second frame in a five minute major in a game misconduct to Robert Newworth. He has been the only player kicked out. There's some mulling about on the ice here. Now, it's three to one at the end of the second period. The Corsairs leading the Owls. We're gonna step aside, take a short break and bring you third period action right after this. Welcome back into Hetland Ice Arena in New Bedford, Massachusetts for third period action between the Westfield State Owls and the UMass Dartmouth Corsairs. Once again, I am Matt Nelson bringing you all the action high atop the ice here on the south coast of Massachusetts for this MASCAC divisional game. The story of this game, well, first off, UMass Dartmouth has a three to one lead, but there has been 15 penalties combined between these two teams called so far. And when we play it, how many players can you stuff into a penalty box earlier on in the second period as we have a semi-break for the Owls and a penalty coming up is sliding down hard into the end boards. Who is that? Let's see, that looks like it's number 20, which would be Clay Ellerbrock. Uh, he got taken out and slid into Chris Stangerone and then hard into the end boards. So there has been now 16 penalties. Because Jake Maynard is headed to the box, but earlier on in the second period were Sean Leonard, Cameron Mack, David Chavis, and Justin Elves all went to the box at the same time, and I thought they were misconducts. They were roughing penalties, so they were only minor penalties, no manpower change, so they had to sit in there until the next stoppage of play, which is why it was longer than two minutes. It is Ellerbrock indeed working out his right shoulder. Meanwhile, Justin Elves was given a game misconduct at 9.52 of the second period. So he's done for the day. 
joining Robert Newworth, who was given a game misconduct at 9.21 of the second period and a hit to the head that led to that. A shot off of Stengerone's glove. Rebound attempt off his stick. Two nice saves for the young goaltender for the Corsairs. FX Gerard, the lone goal scorer, gives it out to Bulos. Back to Gerard. Gerard back to Bulos at the top of the point. Down low now for it, number nine. Spinning with it, that's Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe launches a shot into the glove of Stangrone. He holds for the faceoff. 109 left in Maynard's penalty. While there has been 15 penalties, now 16 called in this game, only four power play opportunities for each team. Westfield is one for four, UMass Ofer. Austin Miller, who had a misconduct, called five minutes into the second period. Sat on the box for 10 minutes, did his time and is now back on the ice. A lot of time bleeding off the clock now. 35 seconds left in the extra man opportunity for the Owls. Worth mentioning Westfield State wearing their visiting navy blue jerseys. Light blue trim around the white numbers and lettering. The Corsairs in their home white jerseys, navy blue shorts. Corsair gold surrounding the navy blue numbers and lettering. Stephen Leonard backhands for Dylan Raiden. Shorthanded bid for the Corsairs. Raiden behind the net. Now 13 seconds left. Good penalty kill here for the Corsairs. Only two shots on net on this power play opportunity. They came on the same sequence. Maynard's out of the box, back to even strength. A shot and a glove save by Stangrone. He holds on for good measure to let the Corsairs reset. 17-25 to go in the third period. Three to one, the Corsairs leading it. To this point, 27 shots for UMass, 21 for Westfield State. Stengerone has saved 20 of those, and Terry Messervier has saved 24. As mentioned, one for four in the power play for the Owls, 0 for four for the Corsairs, eight penalties called against each side. 35 penalty minutes against the Owls, 24 served by the Corsairs. And UMass has tilted the face-off dot in their favor. 36 wins in the dot for UMass compared to 30 for the Westfield State Owls. It's been an interesting one here. A great first period. UMass came out of that first period with a two to nothing lead. Nothing too chippy. Not a lot of penalties in that first period, but the second period, things opened up. And that was highlighted by Robert Neuer throwing his shoulder into the head of Pat Twombly. Twombly luckily is okay and back in the Corsairs lineup. Neuer, meanwhile, was shown to the locker room for that action. Justin Alves was given a misconduct after that. Sean Leonard, who spent a majority of his roughing penalty barking at David Chavis in the box. He launches a shot that goes around the wall all the way through. Ryan Mascali, who couldn't pinch the seam. Now a turnover, a dangerous turnover as Di Gregorio was looking for the free goal. Sean Leonard goes indirect self pass smartly off of the end boards. Twombly with it now to Jimmy Pelton and knocked in by Derek Brittner. The Corsairs change out. The scoring summary, the three goals for UMass. Eric Bolden assisted by John Graylish, Dylan Raiden. That was at 16-26 of the first period at 2:22. Deuces were wild. Captain Steven Leonard assisted by Clay Ellerbrock. And Austin Miller, Westfield State, then got it within one. 
The goal scored by FX Gerard, assisted by Josh Bulos and Jake Ratcliffe. And another goal for UMass! That's Melker Kroon getting on the score sheet with 15-12 to go. He just launched it, a one-timer from just above the faceoff dot, and it beat Terry Messervier. Nothing he could do about it. 4-1 UMass. The one-timer, the one-touch passing that led to it. It's going to be Melker Kroon, assisted by John Graylish and Clay Ellerbrock. The third UMass goal came from Melker Kroon, who's now got two. That was assisted by Ellerbrock. So Kroon with two goals. We have a hand pass ruled against the Owls. This one collected by David Scarbeck. Another whistle from the linesman. Defensive zone faceoff for the Corsairs. 14.52 remaining. Ratcliffe around the boards it's taken by Cameron Mack. Mack with a full head of steam into the owl zone backhanded shot the Servier the initial save and it bounces on the goal line eventually finds its way in and UMass takes a 5-1 lead Cameron Mack backhanded an innocent enough shot Dylan Raiden might have been the one to slam it home on the other side let's take another look at that here's Cameron Mack in with a full head of steam his backhanded shot caught the elbow of Messervier off his back. There it was saved right on the goal line. Good work there by David Chavis. And it was Dylan Raiden that kept digging away and eventually got it up and over Messervier, who was down 5 to 1. UMass 14 34 to go in the third period. You just can't ask for a better start to the third period after what we saw in that second period than what has transpired here in the first six minutes of this third. David Scarbeck backhanding it out to Perone. Steven Leonard now deflects it into the Owls defensive zone. Pat Twombly. Twombly D to D to Ryan Miscali. Back to Twombly. Now up deflected by Di Gregorio. Now bringing it in is number 21, Jojo Carbone. His shot, a wraparound attempt, doesn't go anywhere. Carbone recovers, he's being triple teamed by the Corsairs. Now it's number 14, Paul Fries. Fries in the corner. Steven Leonard takes the hit to move the puck. Now going down, we're gonna have a penalty called and another shoving match starting to ensue. Steven Leonard was in on the action. And it's going to be one of the Owls headed to the box, number 21. That is Jojo Carbone, the sophomore out of Westfield, uh, Marshfield, Mass. Uh, gonna think call the slash on Carbone there as Graylish's stick went down to the ice. So Carbone, the 17th penalty in this game. That is combined between these two teams. But slashing is indeed the call. Michael Perone with it as the Corsairs reset. Now Austin Miller. Austin Miller across the offensive blue line, trying to get it to Steven Leonard. He slides down to the ice. Now Leonard able to get it at the blue line, out looking for his brother who was somewhere in the neutral zone. Now all the way back behind Chris Stangerone who has made 
20 saves on 21 shot attempts for the Westfield State Owls. Austin Miller gets run into. That created separation. Now it is Justin Alves. We're going to have to do a little bit of research because Alves was given a game misconduct. Fifty-three seconds left in the extra man opportunity. Austin Miller back through the neutral zone to recover for the Corsairs. Miller launches shot, blocker save. Out to the blue line for Jake Maynard. Maynard to Cameron Mack. Shot saved by Maservier, loose. Leonard trying to recover, it's lifted out into the neutral zone, collected by Eric Bolden. Bolden able to spin away from the ensuing pressure by Chris Melendez. Now Bolden with it, cross for Cameron Mack, a shot and a save by Messervier, and he holds for the faceoff. is Josh Bulos. He gets separated from the puck. Derek Brittner now tried to make the fancy stick move and carries it to the near side corner. Shot looking deflection, got it from Pelton. And Messervier made the stick save. The Corsairs recover. Brittner launches a shot from the high slot and another save by Messervier. 11 minutes to go, back to even strength now. And the Owls carrying it through the neutral zone. It is taken by Jojo Carbone, fresh out of the box. High shot for David Chavis goes well wide. Now a turnover in is bold in a back end shot and a goal! You can't turn the puck over like that to a top line forward. And the Corsairs take a five goal lead. That is gonna be the end of the day for Terry Messervier. Held on long enough to beat Messervier. And Terry Messervier is going to re be replaced by Cam Limburg out of Howell, Michigan, senior. Six foot, 206 pounder. As Soon as that puck went in, Messervier knew his day was done. Offsides is the call. fighting for it. Now Graylish able to carry it in. Sean Leonard looking up for Bolden who touched it. It's going to be icing waved off as Bolden won the race. He gets held on to. No whistle, 10 minutes even to go in the third period. 6-1 UMass, the offense has come alive here to score three goals in the third period. Graylish looking at the slot for Perone, doesn't connect. Instead, it is number 16, that's Patrick Wren. In the neutral zone, nine and a half to go, 6-1 UMass. This one up and collected by Justin Alves, who, according to the official score sheet, was given a game misconduct in the second period. He's got it now, a shot and a blocker saved by Chris Stangerone. 
Might have gone off his helmet. Shot and a goal! Tic-tac-toe and it's Michael Perrone potting a goal with 9.06 to go. Seven to one, the offensive explosion continues for the Corsairs. Austin Miller got it, sent it to Perrone. No chance for Cam Limber. Corsair is making quite the statement here. Austin Miller off the faceoff makes a nice move. His shot went high, and it's collected by number 28. That's Tanner Opie, the extra skater, getting some extra time here with a big lead for the Corsairs. Pairing with Pat Twombly now on the back end. Prone with it, gets it up to Jimmy Pelton, the third line on the ice now, getting some extended minutes. And Pelton puts one home right through the legs of Cam Limburg. There was nothing Jimmy Pelton could have done to make that an easier stop for Limburg. It didn't leave the ice, there was no screen, and Limburg looks shell shot. There it is, Jimmy Pelton just launching one. Lindbergh just wasn't expecting the shot. Timeout is called on the ice. 8.33 to go, it is eight to one. The UMass Dartmouth Corsairs leading the Westfield State Owls. Oh, 8.33 to go in the third period, it's eight to one UMass. And we're going to take a quick breather and bring you the remainder of the third period right after this. Well, we sorted out the situation with Justin Alves. He was given a game misconduct, but he was not disqualified for the remainder of this game, which is why he's been on the ice in this third period. It's eight to one UMass with 8.27 to go in the third period. Jimmy Pelton getting on the score sheet with the third line. Derek Brittner might have gotten an assist on that, but there was just nothing Cam Lindbergh that said he should not have stopped that shot. It came from just inside the blue line. Couple deflections out in front and that one's, I think Brittner was leading the line there so he's gonna be credited with the goal. This game has been Wild, folks, wild. There's been 17 penalties called. And we're on pace to break that total with the amount of goals scored. A shot and a blocker save, the first save that Cam Lindbergh has made, and he makes a save on the rebound as well. A shot, a whistle, a stoppage, and a high stick is going to be the call. 7.57 to go in the third. It's 9-1. Three goals in about 52 seconds. It started when Perone scored, assisted by Stephen Leonard and Austin Miller at 10.54 of the third. Then a short 30 seconds later, 11.27 Pelton from Kai Kaposi and Derek Brittner exactly 20 seconds after that from Derek, uh, Derek Brittner, scored assisted by David Scarbeck. 41 shots for the Corsairs. 
A paltry 32 saves on those for a tandem of Westfield State goaltenders. Now Cam Lindbergh and Nutt. You'd wonder if we are going to see Tyler Shugru by the end of this one. Terry Maservier has abandoned ship after letting up the sixth goal. Eric Bolden behind the net gives it to John Graylish. This is the second in the Mascac Westfield State Owls. They came in at 9, 4, and 5 overall. 7, 2, and 2 win conference. Barring a couple of miracles, that is going to drop to 7, 3, and 2. Now a tie up behind Chris Stangarone. Westfield State came into this game with a 5-2 win over Framingham State at Loring Arena in Framingham. Now Stephen Leonard launches one deflected up into the protective netting. The Corsairs will travel to Framingham later this week to play the Rams who Everyone's kind of beaten up on them. 2-15 and 2 overall, 1-10 and 1 in the conference. So UMass Dartmouth could string together a couple. Jump Fitchburg State in the standings in the MASCAC, theoretically. Last time these two teams met, Josh Vertentes scored an equalizer with four seconds remaining to force a 3-3 draw. Derek Brittner headed to the box. Being a linebacker is gonna be the call there. Two minute penalty, I think interference is gonna be the official word. Brittner just put his head and shoulders down and he really did, he looked like a middle linebacker who was trying to stop a running back right in the gut. A shot blocker saved by Stangarone. Westfield State launching a shot and a glove saved by Stangarone the 25th shot of the day for the Owls. 24 saves for Chris Stangarone. 42 shots on net for the Corsairs. 33 saves for the Westfield State goaltending team. Shot blocked away by Austin Miller. That gets a cheer out of the UMass bench. Shot another block, this one is batted by Sean Leonard out all the way down. 105 to go now on the power play, 443 left in the third period. 0 for five on the power play for UMass, one for five so far for the Westfield State Owls. This one sent all the way down the river again. Derek Brittner in the box for interference. And it is indeed now Taylor Shugru in the crease for the Westfield State Owls after Kim Lindbergh gave up three goals against on four shots in a whopping two minutes and 22 seconds of action. 23 seconds left on Brittner's penalty, 4.02 in the period. Shugru has made three saves on three attempts in two minutes and 34 seconds, and Terry Maservier gave up six goals against on 35 shots.
Shot that deflected to the end glass. Quickly sent all the way down, right as the power play expired, so no icing. Kai Kaposi chasing it down along with Derek Brittner, who's fresh out of the box. Three and a half to go. It's nine to one UMass over the Westfield State Owls. They have beaten the Owls and they have beaten them good. We weren't sure exactly what we were gonna see after that very, very chippy second period that saw 15 penalties called against both teams combined, including two mis game misconducts against the Owls. We're gonna have another call here. That's going to be a high stick, so it's not gonna be a power play. Just played with a high stick is the call, so a defensive zone faceoff for the Corsairs. The scoring summary, a lengthy one, as you could imagine. Three minutes and 34 seconds in, Eric Bolden scored from John Graylish and Dylan Raiden. The next goal didn't come for about 14 minutes of game time after that. 17.38 of the first period. Stephen Leonard from Austin Miller, Clay Ellerbrock. 3.18 into the second. Westfield State got within one. FX Gerard scored from Josh Bulos and Jake Ratcliffe. And then about six minutes after that, the lead was cemented for the Corsairs as Melker Kroon at 9.47 from John Grealish. He did it again about five minutes into the third period to really open things up. That is when it became five to one. Melker Kroon from John Grealish, Kai Kapasi, about 40 seconds later, Dylan Raiden from Cameron Mack, Eric Bolden. Four minutes after that, Eric Bolden unassisted. And then that, here's where things really got out of hand. 10.54 of the third, Michael Perrone from Stephen Leonard and Austin Miller. About 30 seconds after that, Jimmy Pelton from Kai Kapasi. And exactly 20 seconds after that, Derek Brittner from David Scarbeck. So in the span of about 50 seconds, there were three UMass goals scored. All of them on goaltender Cam Limburg. Tyler Shugru has gone into net for the Owls. Now with a minute and a half to go, the Owls not having a good day here on the south coast of Massachusetts. Bolden shot saved by the blocker of Shugru. There's Justin Alves who earned a game misconduct in the second period but not disqualified. That is a choice the refs can make as they did with Robert Newworth about 30 seconds before Alves' misconduct was given. Now Bolden two on one. He chips it ahead, a shot, and a nice save for Shugru. It was Melker Kroon looking for the hat trick. About a minute to go now. Back into down for David Scarbeck. Going down to the ice is Tanner Opie. And it squirts out into the neutral zone. Here's Melker Kroon. He's got two of the nine UMass goals. 40 seconds to go. He's looking for the hat trick. Scarbeck out in front for Bolden. His spin around shot doesn't connect. And the Owls have it. As you can see, the air has started to leave the tires as we're going to have a holding penalty called on Jake Maynard because why not stop the clock one more time with 23.6 seconds to go. Maynard's going to be headed to the box. Slashing is the call. Ninth. Team penalties called in this one combined. One for five on the power play so far for Westfield State. That power play goal came on their second power play of the afternoon. Twombly off the faceoff win. Sent all the way down the river, 15 seconds to go. Nine to one the score. UMass on top, a big MASCAC conference victory over the Westfield State Owls.
The buzzer sounds and we have reached the end of this one. Nine to one is your final score. We'll run down the scoring summary one more time. The nine UMass goals, Eric Bolden, Stephen Leonard, Melker Kroon with two in a row, Dylan Raiden, Eric Bolden, Michael Perron, Jimmy Pelton, Derek Brittner. Eight different Corsairs found the score sheet and that is something that should be notable. The lone goal for the Westfield State Owls, FX Gerard. Nine to one, the final score here from Hetland Ice Arena in a MASCAC conference game. The UMass Dartmouth Corsairs with the big victory. Nine goals on 45 shots. And meanwhile, 26 shots for the Owls. One goal, 25 saves for Chris Stangrone. He had a heck of a day here for the Corsairs. Nine to one, the final score. I want to thank you for watching this production of the UMass Athletic Department and Dartmouth Community Media. DCTV doing an excellent job as always. For everyone here at DCTV and the UMass Athletic Department, I'm Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.